Hey gamers, today it's time to play Zombies Dead Time Stories. Let's check it out. So what all comes in Zombies Dead Time Stories? Well, first off, you're going to have the scenario book. And it's going to have a bunch of fan-made scenarios, most of them dealing with Zombie 7, and a lot of them repetitive or unimaginative uh, throughout most of it here. And then at the bottom right here, then you got some campaign play. And this is where the meat of the scenario is. This is where the good stuff is. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything in this review, so I'm not going to go past any further here, but this campaign will tell you what to set up, what expansion to use. It uses expansions 1 through 12. So you can go start at the beginning all the way to the zombie zoo is what you would need to play the full campaign. Now, if you don't have the full campaign, it says you can substitute here or skip certain episodes in the campaign. But this is the campaign play, and this is where it begins. This, fan-made garbage. This, the good stuff. All right, so that's the scenario book. What else are you getting in this one? Well, you're also going to get some character cards of the characters you're going to play during this scenario, the campaign phase. And let's look at some of these characters here. First off, you have Anna. And she has one starting health, one movement, and draws the top two map tiles off the top. Instead of one, she places one and puts the other back on top of the map tiles. So she gets to actually choose which direction she gets to go, hence the binoculars there. You have Luke, who has one starting health, two starting, uh, plus two starting bullets, plus one starting health, and he's a plus one in combat. Yes. You have Jack, who has three starting bullets, and at the death, he may start over in the nearest building instead of the starting tile. So when he dies, he goes to the starting, uh, he, instead of going to the starting tile, just to the nearest building. So that's nice for Jack. You have Grace, who has one starting health, one, uh, well, plus one starting health, excuse me, on top of her three. Uh, one, she has a plus one to her card hand size, so she can hold up to four cards instead of three. And once per turn, make nor losing a life for any reason. That's big. Grace is a doctor, so I guess she can heal herself. Mia is a plus two card hand size. And Kate, I love Kate, a plus one in movement. And once per turn, you can spend one life, one of your heart tokens, to distract another player to steal two of their bullets and one of their cards, using this card immediately if possible, and it does count, does not count to cards played in the round. So she is a flirt, and she will steal your stuff. That is kind of cool. Next up is Taylor. He is a plus one in card hand size, and once per round, you may duplicate. He may duplicate another player's event card action that was just played. That is huge. You have Elliot, who is a plus one in combat and a plus one in movement. You have Ethan, who is a plus, who has gets a plus one in starting health. He's a plus one in combat. It says once per game, per game. Uh, well, I just say scenario chapter. He may place an obstruction. Uh, basically, it's just a flipped over token, a white token, on a current square to block zombie movement on that square until the player, until another player enters the square. So he can actually stop the flow of zombies at a particular moment. That's really neat. And the last one is Christian. He's a plus one in movement. And he can move through non-building tile spaces. Uh, though you may not end your movement there. He's like one of these base jumpers, and so he can go, he can actually cut through certain tiles where most players wouldn't. So he can get around a lot faster than other players would. I gotta be honest, these characters, and we played, I think, through most of them through the campaign, because we house ruled it that once they die, they are out of the game. Just to make it even more special, you really get attached. Like me and Jack, ugh. We made it all the way through, buddy, without dying. I love Jack. He's my boy. Uh, but all these players are just really nice. Um, and so that's the character cards. Now, other things you get, you have experience cards here. And I'll sh kind of show you a few of these. Uh, the experience cards are what you get. You get certain experience cards when you uh, handle or complete certain scenarios in the book, in the campaign mode. And they can signify a lot of things. For instance, uh, bullet bonds. 
get a one plus starting bullets, <coughs> a max of three plus, and you redraw if you're already at your max. So that's kind of nice. Uh, shooter once per turn, you may take two bullets where you'd normally pick up one. That's huge. Once per turn, you can pick up two health tokens where you'd normally pick up one. That's the medic. The sprinter, I love this one. You could roll both dice for movement and choose the one you want to use. You can use the higher movement every time. That gives you a better chance of moving quicker. Marksman, once per turn you may attack two zombies up to three spaces away. That's cool. Don't have to be right on them. Uh, this one, Killing Machine, it says you may use two weapons in combat. All of the rules apply. So they can be even the same weapon. Uh, in the campaign, you can only have one weapon per character unless you have this experience card, which gives you two. Uh, here's movement bonus. It says one plus uh, to movement rolls, and with a max of plus two, redraw if you're already at your max. Huh, let me look back at my bullet one. Did it say bonds? Or, oh, it says bonus. Whoops, didn't read that right. Here's a combat bonus, plus one to all combat rolls with a maximum of two. Redraw if you're already at your max. Uh, there are other combat bonuses in here, and you can double up on them, but not triple up on them. Uh, you have the Explorer. I love this one. Place two map tiles instead of one. So that's really cool. And you got Deadhead. You can make move past one zombie per turn without fighting it. So that's kind of cool. So those are all come of some of the those are the ex multiple experiences you can have experience cards you can get in this deck, and there's multiple ones of each card there. So those are the experience deck. One thing I'm not going to show you are episode cards. I'm not going to reveal them because that's going to that's kind of a spoiler there. The game will tell you when you need to reveal these and what numbers you have. There are different numbers at the top there, different episodes. So you can see there, like I said, I'm covering it because I, I want to save you guys from spoilers. But you'll pull these episode cards and they are bad. <laughs> bad things that can happen to you. Other things the game gives you is this little zombie stat reference card. Uh, it'll tell you, hey, here's how many they can move. It actually lets tigers and lions move up to three spaces. Bears move to hyenas. So a lot of the animals move faster. I love this. And it, they have they give different denot, uh, denotations of how to kill them. Like monkeys are really hard to kill, um, and and what they do damage with, and how much they're worth. You know they're worth different points, and then any special abilities they have. So if you want to make things harder in any regular game or during the campaign, add the zombie staff re, stat reference card like we did in the game. This is extremely fun. Another thing that's really fun is these bingo cards. I didn't think much of them at first, but now that we play with them, they're really nice. Each bingo card is different, and you play it just like you would bingo. Once you achieve a certain feat in the game, I have five bullets, place something there. You, we basically just place upside down tokens there. Once you establish bingo, say bingo, and you get to establish what that prize is. Now for us, it was drawing an extra experience card. Uh, you, it could be anything. It could be multiple you know, bullets or you know, lives, or you get to skip ahead, or some, you get some wonderful item in the game. You know, you can make it a special bonus. You can put this in any of your games. Any of your regular Zombies games can have Zombies Bingo, can have the Zombies st Stack Reference cards. Uh, of course, you can use some of the crappy fan-made scenarios in here. Uh, the characters, if you want. It's all compatible with the regular Zombies game. But that is Zombies Dead Time Stories. Final thoughts. What do I think about the game? Well, you know what? I thought I did this review years ago. And then a viewer said, hey Matt, are you going to ever review Zombies Dead Time Stories? I said, I did. And I looked through all my videos and it's not there. This is the weirdest thing because I remember talking about this. So it's kind of weird. Now we played this game uh, two years ago as of this video. Uh, and instead of doing our regular yearly Zombageddon, I said, hey guys, I just got Zombies Dead Time Stories. Let's play through this. And we played through a campaign. Now, uh, the characters, like I said, you really get attached to them. The scenarios, uh, the fan scenarios are garbage. Um, I, a lot of them were like, that's all you could come up with? Boring. And uh, so they're, they are totally skippable. In fact, when I was looking over the scenarios at first, I was like, oh, this was a bad investment. That's what I said. And then the campaign mode. Oh, I forgot to mention that it also includes humans. So if you have the spinoff game Humans, you'll be using those humans and you'll be running from them too. You're running from other humans because they're the bad guys. It is so creative. 
The campaign is excellent. Now, playing through it, we almost did it again last year. We debated on whether we should play the campaign story again. That's how good it is. I, I really did enjoy it. Um, and we, we ended up not. So I've only played through it once. But to be honest, it's good. It is worth your time. It's really cheap right now, too, I think. Uh, Dead Time Stories has those little zombie stat reference cards, which are super cool. They make different animals and creatures move and how they affect you, how they get hit points, what they're worth. I mean, to us, that was really big. And, you know, we may play a Zombageddon with those zombie stat reference sheets. That's how good it is. Uh, the bingo. At first, I thought that was really dumb. We didn't play it for the longest. And then we started adding bingo into it. It's funny because it makes you want to do certain achievements instead of win the game. Because every time you do achievements, you uh, earn up to get, you know, whatever the prize is. You decide what the prize is. That's really cool. So in the campaign mode, it was an extra experience card. In uh, regular Zombies games, we would say it's, you know, an, a, a buttload of bullets, 10 bullets or something. And we would just give these different prizes away and we were having fun trying to complete objectives while also trying to win the game. So for that reason, uh, Dead Time Stories, pretty good, pretty good. I got this because I was bored and there was no zombies coming out. You know, Zombies 14 looked to be delayed forever in a day, or maybe it was Zombies 15, I can't remember. But I was like, oh, well, let's go ahead and get this and have something to play with. Mmm, I do like this. Good investment, Zombies fans. All right, that's all the time I have for now, gamers. So until next time, game on.